All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwa that's listening and learning. Uh, today, I, I want to get into this topic talking about how the mirth is gone, man. The mirth is gone out of America. People can't even... Uh, feel the love within the air anymore and people can't enjoy themselves the way they want to everything is back and forth back and forth especially here like places here like in illinois you know they were reopening everything everything went to like phase three phase four where the gyms and certain restaurants and bars and everything was opening back up to a certain uh you know capacity certain amount of people within those places and uh and now you know they they like the the covid cases are jumping right back up uh way more than what it was i think what 3 months ago and they looking at it and they looking at it as if you know the beginning of when for, when covid first started and now they're shutting everything right back down and people you know was literally going into the restaurant sitting down and enjoying themselves and now they can't even do that again and i ran into a couple of people that um was like, man, I was just here yesterday and I was able to sit up in here. How come I can't sit up in here today? And it was like, well, the governor ordered that the restaurants be closed back again. So you only can do uh, pickup or delivery. And people are, are upset, man. They are upset to the fullest. And I'm just like, man, you know, I'm over here um, chilling last night, you know, and then I'm just looking at some random things. From, you know, the decade I was born in, you know, or, uh, certain cartoons or TV shows and movies and everything that was, uh you know, popular back in the day or whatever. And I'm just like, man, I'm listening and looking at certain things. And I'm just like, man, you know, those days are over with, man. Like the golden days of America, man, so to speak. <laughs> uh, it's over with, man. But what I really want to get into that, uh you know, that added on to me doing this lesson is this right here it's talking about the travel uh how you can travel where you can travel to and what are the uh necessities of you traveling or what's going to happen if you travel to different countries if they allow you to do it all right so i'm gonna read this and i'm gonna get my point so it says as countries begin to reopen is there any place abroad where i can travel right now and then it says yes though still not easily on August 6th, the U.S. State Department lifted the nearly five-month-old travel advisory, warning Americans against all international travel. Oh, it's a lot here. There we go. All international travel, citing improved health and safety conditions in some countries. But both the State Department and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, still have advisories in place urging against non-essential travel to dozens of countries including most of the European Union, Canada, and Mexico. And while a growing number of nations are reopening their borders to tourism, several countries, including much of Europe, remain off-limits to tourists from the U.S., where cases of coronavirus are still surging in many parts of the country. And you already know what tourists do, man. They, they sightsee, they look at, you know, the different culture of that place that they're at or whatever, and they enjoy themselves, man. And, you know, <laughs> you can't do that now, man. You just can't do it. Then it says other countries, including the United Kingdom and Ireland, do allow visitors from the U.S., but they are required to self-isolate for 14 days. In England, breaching the quarantine comes with uh, 1,000 some <laughs> penalty. Other countries that are welcome, welcoming back U.S. travelers, including Croatia, uh, Equator, French Polynesia, Kenya, Rwanda and a handful of Caribbean countries such as Antigua, Barbados, and St. Lucia or Lucia require visit visitors to show proof of a negative COVID-19 test. Now, this is I'm going to read this, then I'm going to uh, speak. It says, I am am I allowed to travel to Canada? And it says the closure of the U.S. Canada border was extended one again until at least November 21st, which means Non-essential travelers are still prohibited from entering Canada by sea, plane, or car. Canadian citizens, permanent residents, or relatives of Canadian citizens or permanent residents are allowed into the country, but they'll be required to quarantine for 14 days. Now, I know uh, a couple, man. 
I know a couple where uh, they met uh, either last year or sometime or whatever, and uh, they were building, you know, on a relationship or whatever, you know. Uh, and uh, one of them live in Canada and the other one lives here. All right. And then it got to the point where, you know, you know how it is, you know, man and woman meets and whatever. And, you know, they fall in love, whatever the case may be. All right, cool. Fast forward, man. They had plans to the point where they were getting ready to move in with each other. Uh, getting ready, talking to say, talking about marriage and all this other shit, man. And now they can't even see each other, man. They cannot even see each other at all. At all. They said they had plans, I guess, for the middle of this year. Uh, so then they could finally, you know, get rid of the long distance between them. And now they can't even do it. So now they over here, you know, uh, video chatting or doing whatever they can do to keep communication going. But they can't see each other, man, because of COVID. And I'm just like, damn. And the thing that really hit my head the most with that situation was I was like, man, it might get to the point where you may never see that woman again, man. You may never see or she may or, you know, vice versa. She may never see him again. In person, ever, man, ever, because they're talking about, you know, uh, the border is supposed to be closed at least until pretty much the end of this month. But from what Joe Biden is saying, he's saying that he expects uh, the coronavirus cases to er like surge, man. And he expects those to this to go up to the roof, and they already talking about it might be a, a national lockdown by the end of the year, man. By the end of the year. All right. And so I'm just like, damn. So if this happens, man, if these cases continue to rise like they saying it is, they're going to extend this date from November 21st, man. It's going to be extended even further. This would be damn near a whole year of them trying to figure out, man, when are we ever going to see each other? When are we ever going to do this? When are we ever going to do that? And all I see is them talking and everything like that. And, you know, they trying to keep the sanity, <laughs> so to speak, but I'm just like, damn, in the back of my mind, it's like, y'all never will see each other again, man, because of this, because of this, that's wild to think about, man, you meet somebody that you actually like, and you know, you get, have plans and everything, but now that, that these lockdowns are in effect, this COVID is still in the air and everything like that, you can't even enjoy the person that you fell in love with because of this, man, and that's only one of the things, you can't go out and uh, enjoy yourself in these public places. You got to stay at home with people that you may not like all the time, man. All the time, you know. Only thing you can do is just be nostalgic. You can just look at the days that were and just be like, hey, man, these days were great. These days were so fun. These days was this. These days were that. But that's all you have are memories, man. Memories. And that's why I was like, man, the mirth is gone from America, man. I could just feel it, man. I could feel that the mirth is gone. You walk outside, man, you could feel the emptiness within this country, man. You can feel that nothing, something is not right here, man. Something is not right. And now, you know, you got the video going around with the truckers. And they're getting ready to go on strike probably by the end of November. And they said, and one of them, you know, the truckers are warning. They're like, man, if this happens, you people better um, stock up on food or whatever, because the truckers are the ones who bring in the goods from the different locations, man. It's it's going to get wild out here, man. It's already wild out here, but it's going to get even more wild out here, man. The having fun here in America and the rest of this world is gone, man. Yeah, how about shimmy how shy is working? And it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing because we already know that we have a beautiful kingdom to look forward to if we're part of the elect, man. But to get back to the point, like I said, the mirth is gone. Like, so let me start with a scripture. Let me get a scripture first before I continue to speak more. Uh, I'm gonna get Psalms 13 and 2. And it says, How long shall I take counsel in my soul? Having sorrow in my heart daily. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? And you know, this is talking about the ones that's in the know. You know, the ones that's in this truth. Because we do have sorrow daily, man. 
You know, we always um uh complaining. We're well, not complaining, but we always, you know, uh angry and uh waiting for a, a change to come because you know Esau is above us right now. He's still exhausted above us. He's making us go through um these these horrible things, man. He's making us go through this sorrow. He's making us cry. He's he's making us mourn. You know, he's taking away our, our freedom, even though we didn't have freedom in the first place, but he's definitely taking it away even more now. All right. And the thing is, man, and it's going to continue to be like that as long as he's in rulership, man. But hey, like the scriptures say, man, people do have sorrow in their hearts daily, man. They they want things to go back to normal, man. People are not um happy here right now. They're not happy here at all. You know, they, they might hide it, you know, because, you know, you know how America work, man. You got to put on a fake face, man. You got to put on that fake smile, you know, <laughs> so you can, uh, you know, try to avoid a uh, deep conversation because, you know, a lot of people don't people don't like people, period, man. And, you know, a lot of people don't like having deep conversations or whatever. And they'll just front and act like they are they're OK. But the, the truth is they're not, man. And that's why a lot of the suicides be happening, man, or the suicide alerts are high these days especially right now man because like i said man people don't like people man you know they people people don't even like their own family members man and for them to be locked up or for them to have to be around certain individuals that they hate or don't like and they're forced to do that man hey that'll drive people crazy you know but um <laughs> let me get proverbs 14 and 13 it's Proverbs 14 and 13. It says, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness, man. And like I said earlier, because at the end of the day, man, people are turning into the Joker real fast, man. You know, you look at the movie, the Joker, the recent one that came out, you know, he had a, a, a laughing condition where he, you know, in certain situations, he just couldn't stop laughing. But he was full of sorrow, man. And, you know, that's these people right now, man. You know, they're, they're trying to laugh it off. They're trying to enjoy themselves. Oh, okay, the new Xbox came out. The PlayStation 5 came out. Yeah. Or, you know, they're they they, they get, they're giving you your sports back and everything, even though they have the, the digital audiences and everything like that, man. You know, they're trying to keep you uh, afloat, so to speak, you know. But at the end of the day, man, all you doing is just, you know, trying to cover up, cover up the sorrow that you feel, man. You know, because, uh, you know, when you when you there's a lot of people that's really getting tired of wearing a mask, you know, they'll be out enjoying themselves or whatever. And that's, you know, they got to get ready to go to the store. They walk in the store. They'll be like, damn, I forgot my mask. Now you got to run back to the car and get your mask or you forgot it at home. You got to you can't even go in the store because you don't have a mask on. And, you know, which we all know is just conditioning your mind. So then you uh, accept the vaccine and the RFID chip was just the mark of the beast easily or more easily. All right. Because, you know, they're going to be like, yeah, you know, you can't do this without the mask. Then it's going to get even more strict. Oh, now you can't do this unless you had a vaccine. Then it's going to get to the point. It's going to be completely strict when that chip comes along. All right, they're gonna be like nigga. <laughs> excuse my friends. They're gonna be like, hey man, you can't, um, you can't buy or sell. You basically you can't live unless you have that RFID chip, man. All right, but to get back to the point, it says even a laugh, they're the hardest sorrowful, man. Because like I said, man, it's just, everybody is covering up what they really feel. They're covering up what they really feel, man, because they they not used to this type of living, man. They not used to it. That's why you know when this when everything hits the fan, man, when the shit hit the fan, man, people are going to bug out extremely. People are going to go completely crazy. Completely crazy, man. You know, you talking about riots right now. You think those riots are something. Wait until these people don't have nothing to eat. Wait until these people don't have no shelter. Wait until these people have to face um, troops and everything like that. Uh, on a daily basis, they tell you you can't leave your house unless we we say so. You only can stay out or come outside unless you're going to work and doing all these other things or whatever. But you got to make sure you come back here at a certain time, or else something, or else not just or else. <laughs> you know, it's gonna get wild, man. This is Sirach thirty-one and thirteen. It says, "Remember 
that a wicked eye is an evil thing. And what is created more wicked than an eye? Therefore, it weepeth upon every occasion, man. Read this one more time. It says, remember, remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. And what is created more wicked than an eye? Therefore, it weepeth upon every occasion. All right. You know, <laughs> if you want to just get simple, you know, you look at uh, the all seeing eye, you know, that's that's Esau using his um power on the left hand side because he's the so-called illuminated one. He sees everything that's going on or whatever. You know, he shows you his wicked eye every day, man. But therefore, it weepeth upon every occasion. He bring nothing but tears to this place, man. In every situation that he gets his, his hands on. All right. And people are feeling that, man. You know, I make I do deliveries for a uh, living. And, I, you know, I uh, deliver to certain people. And, you know, I uh, walk into certain people's houses and everything. And, you know, there's a lot of people out here that's that's just broken down, man. That is broken down. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Nothing has even happened yet, man. But you can just hear it in people's uh, voices. You can see it in people's eyes and everything, man. It's like it. It is getting tired of the way of living right, ma right now, man. They want things to go back to normal. They really do. You know, but <laughs> Esau got a, uh, he, he got a rude awakening for y'all coming along the corner, right? around the corner man he got some plan for every single one of y'all man because he wants to usher in his new world order and you people are gullible to the point where you're gonna allow it to happen even though ultimately this is yahweh bashem this is yahweh shai's plan yahweh bashem yahweh shai's plan salakia you know this is their plan so then they can uh so esau can do what he gotta do and then this can be the uh reason why Yahweh Shai comes back with the angels and save the elect, man. Because that's all it is, man. That's all the New World Order is for. So you can put get your hands on the elect and you can try to, you know, be wicked. And you're going to fulfill prophecy. That's all it is, man. That's all the New World Order is for. And so you can fulfill prophecy. You're going to do everything that the Most High has put in your spirit. And then you're going to do exactly what he wants you to do, man. <laughs> And that's why Esau got this pride, man, because he feel like he's going to stop prophecy. But, yeah, we're going to see about that. But anyway, this is Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 14. It says, For the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as a smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest and passes away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. Because <laughs> you know, you people that want America to, go, America to go back to normal, man, you are the ungodly. You know, you are the ungodly, man. Your hope in this place is like the dust that is blown into the wind, man. It, it's, it easily fades away, man. It easily fades away. Just like you're seeing it happen now. America is fading away, man. And only here, it's only here for a time. America was only temporary, man. The most high put Esau in power just so he can um punish us for going against him in the first place, man. But this is not supposed to last forever. This is not supposed to last forever. This is a place is only supposed to last for a certain amount of time. And now Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai is making moves, man. He's making moves. Because he knows he doesn't want the wicked to rule forever, you know. He's going to be a man of his word. He's going to he's going to keep his promises, man. He's going to give his promises to Israel. You Israelites out there, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. He's going to give you the kingdom, man. He's not going to keep us here in these chains forever, man. He's going to give us all the promises. All right. That's why, you know, this 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 happiness is so-called fun. He's this way of life that you know it as we live in it right now, man, is disappearing. It's disappearing like smoke, man. It's fading away, man. It's fading to black, man. All right? Only way we're going to remember this place is because we're going to remember the wickedness that Esau have done to us. And, hey, we're going to use those thoughts, man, to uh, build up our anger in the kingdom, which is going to be another beautiful thing, man. You know? <laughs> Esau ain't going to know what to do in the kingdom, man. He's going to be getting his ass whooped left and right, man. But we're going to close it with this scripture, with the main one right here. 
Isaiah 24 and 11. And it says, there is a, cry a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. And the city is left desolation and the gate is smitten or smitten with destruction. All right. If there's a crying for wine in the streets, all joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone, man. The joy of America is gone. You can't go to Six Flags, you know, ride the roller coasters and everything because well, guess what? That's a big crowded place and you can't be in a big crowd no more. You can't be in those major crowds where people are close together. You can't go to concerts and be all close up on a female and grind up on her or whatever while the music is playing and everything like that. You can't do that, man. You can't go to your football games. You can't go to your basketball games. You can't even go to um uh a uh, uh, high school basketball right now. It's not going on. They talking about bringing back high school basketball. They said they'll bring it back if they went in to play basketball while wearing mask, man. What type of shit is that? This is a, it's a sport, man, and you exercising while you playing, man. You know, you putting your body through um physical labor, so to speak, you know? You working your body by, you know, dribbling, you know, running, jumping, and all of these other things, man. How are you going to be able to breathe correctly if you have a mask on, man? You need that oxygen so you can keep moving. The mirth of the land is gone, man. It's over with. It's over with. It's never going to go back to normal. Everything that you realize that you once had, man, is that's it is what it is. That's what you once had. You will never have that feeling of fun here again. It's over with, man. Only thing that you can do is just get ready for the worst, which is to come, because that's all that's coming is way more worse times. All right. Worse of times. You know, if you like I said, this is all we got, man, are these scriptures right here. These scriptures are our comforter, man. This is what's going to keep us stable. This is what's going to keep us sane. And this is what's going to prepare us for what's to come in the future. These scriptures. That's it, man. That's it. We're going to read these scriptures and we're going to be like, yeah, we're going to build our faith. And we're going to put all of our faith within Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, man. That's it. We want this place to go down. We can care less about the mirth of this land. We want the mirth of the kingdom, man. It's like the scriptures say, man, one day in the court of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is better than a thousand years here in his best days. Paraphrasing, you know. But just to be at the door of, uh, of the kingdom, just to stand at the door, one day standing at the door of the kingdom of heaven is better than a thousand of America's best days here, man. Put that in the back of your mind, man. That's what we aiming for, man. We don't care about nostalgia. Yeah, we had some good times here. Yeah, you know, they had some good TV shows, you know, good movies and everything like that. Had some good times. But it's time to move on, man. It's time to move on to what's really real. <laughs> what's really real. You know what I'm saying? It's time to move on to bigger and better things, man, which is the kingdom of heaven and us being righteous and never have to wake up in tears and wearing bitch ass mask all day. <laughs> all right. So I hope this was edifying, man. So with that, man, I'm going to say call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratzazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.